أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسها نأتي بخير منها أو مثلها ألم تعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير ألم تعلم أن الله له ملك السماوات والأرض وما لكم من دون الله من ولي ولا نصير أم تريدون أن تسألوا رسولكم كما سئل موسى من قبل ومن يتبدل الكفر بالإيمان فقد ضل سواء السبيل رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Once again everyone السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, I'm going to be speaking with you for about 15 minutes. First of all, I'd like to express how, ha- how happy I am and grateful I am to have the opportunity to be in this wonderful masjid. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all of our ibadah and uh, reward those who take care of this masjid and spread khair by means of it. The ayat that I wanted to talk to you about today are from Surah Al-Baqarah. And there's a particular ayah that I want to get to, that's ayah number 108. Uh, in which Allah Azza wa Jal talks to the Muslims. He says, أَمْ تُرِيدُونَ أَن تَسْأَلُوا رَسُولَكُمْ كَمَا سُئِلَ مُوسَى مِنْ قَبْلُ Or is it that you want to question your messenger the way Musa was questioned before? So he's asking the Muslims, do you want to treat your messenger the way Musa was treated, but specifically the way Musa used to be asked questions? Of course, the Sahaba used to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam questions all the time. So they, asking the Prophet questions is a big part of Islam. So many ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are a result of some Sahabi came and asked a question, and so many ayat came from the Quran when somebody came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked a question, and then the ayah came down. But here in this ayah, Allah says, do you want to ask or do you want to question your messenger the same way Musa was questioned before? So we have to learn now that there's two different kinds of questions, the kinds of questions that are encouraged. And then there are the other kinds of questions that are being prohibited. You're not supposed to ask those kinds of questions. And this is so serious that in this ayah, Allah says, وَمَن يَتَبَدَّلِ الْكُفْرَ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ that whoever replaces their iman, their faith, with kufr, with disbelief. Kufr means two things. It means disbelief and it also means being ungrateful. If you, can re- if you replace your iman with these two things, whoever does that has gone, from, gone away from the straight path or the right path. So what Allah is saying here is if you ask the wrong kinds of questions, you will replace your iman with kufr. That's what Allah is saying in this ayah. So this is a pretty scary thing. I have to not only worry about how to protect my iman by asking questions, because I'm supposed to ask questions, I also have to protect my iman by not asking the wrong kinds of questions. So this is what I wanted to spend time with you trying to understand. What are the wrong kinds of questions that are being warned about in this amazing ayah? A couple of ayat before this, when I recited in the beginning, I recited a little bit before this. Allah Azza wa Jal describes something that the Yahud were saying to the Prophet ﷺ. They were basically saying, you can follow your book, we already have a book, we have Torah. So we don't need to follow your religion, we already follow ours. And in fact, even today, there are rabbis who believe that the Prophet ﷺ is the Messenger of Allah. Even now, today, Jewish scholars accept that, uh, that the Messenger is in fact the Messenger of Allah, but we don't have to follow him because we have our own revelation. His revelation is for everyone else. So they developed this idea that it's okay, you can be a Messenger, just not for us. 
Because we already have Torah, we already have the teachings of Musa alayhi salam. And Allah responds to them and He says, مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا That actually, now that this messenger has come, we don't, we don't cancel any previous ayah or make it forgotten except that we bring something better or something just like it. In other words, now the Torah no longer applies. It's now been cancelled. It's been replaced by something that has the same thing as the Torah or has even better than the Torah. That is the, that's the Qur'an. That's what Allah tells Bani Israel. مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أو ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسها نأتي بخير منها أو مثلها ألم تعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير. Now this is going to help us understand the wrong kinds of questions a little bit, because that my subject was how do you make sure you don't ask the wrong kinds of questions. The Israelites, Banu Israel, Allah talks about them so much because we're supposed to learn a lot from them. We're supposed to learn from their mistakes. And one of their mistakes was the way that they used to ask questions of their own Prophet. Whatever came in their head, they want to ask about it. Whatever curiosity they have, they want to come and ask about it. Even in the narrations we find in the Qur'an, sometimes the Yahud would come to the, the Prophet ﷺ, the Banu Israel would come in Medina and they would say, Oh yeah, how come sometimes a baby boy is born? How come sometimes a baby girl is born? Then sometimes they'll come and ask, So uh, who are these uh, people of the cave? Who are these people? Or tell us about this, tell us about that. Oh yeah, give me this answer, give me this answer. In other words, whatever question comes in their head, they say, we're gonna ask. And if you don't have the answer, ah, uh, you know, you have a problem. Now let's pause for a second. I don't want to talk about Bani Israel, I want to talk about us. I have people come to me and say, Ustad, you're, uh, you do research, right? I'm like, yeah, I do research. I got a question, I asked a lot of scholars, nobody has the answer to this question. Let me ask you this question. This has happened to me hundreds of times. People very proud of their question because nobody can answer their question. And you know what? Even if you give them the answer, they're like, mm, they're going to go to the next guy and say, you know, I asked a lot of people this question. Nobody got the answer to my question. Let me ask you this question too. <laughs> this obsession with one question, then another question, then another question. So let's take a step back. Where do questions come from? The real issue is, where do questions come from? Whatever you're thinking about, wherever your mind goes, that's the direction that your questions are going to come from. If you're thinking about cars all the time, you're going to have questions about cars. If you're thinking about money all the time, you're going to have questions about making money. Wherever your mind is focused, that's where questions arise from. Now the issue is, what Allah gave us in His revelation, what He gave us in the Qur'an, He gave us a book. It's not a book of answers for your questions. It didn't come to address, it's not Google, it's not the Allah's revealed Google for you. <laughs> Whatever question I have, I'm just gonna ask and Allah will have the answer for me. Because my mind goes in every direction, which means I'm gonna keep asking questions that are going in every direction. And the problem with that is, there is no straightforward direction. So what I want you to do now in these few minutes, I want you to understand the right way of asking questions by way of an example. I'm going to try to give you an example, stay with me, try to focus on this example, inshallah the concept will become clear. I want you to pretend that I am your mathematics teacher, and you are 10 years old in school, and I'm your mathematics teacher, and I'm teaching you multiplication today. And I start teaching you multiplication. And then you raise your hand. And you say, which color is better, blue or orange? You're a math teacher, right? You should tell me. And I say, can you focus on what I'm teaching you? Then another student raises their hand and says, I want to know about addition. No, 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 we're studying multiplication right now. No, but I want to know about addition. Can you tell me about addition? Then another one raises their hand and says, hey, so... I have a question about calculus. No, 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 you're in third grade. Why are you asking about calculus? Can we focus on what we're doing here? What happens, the teacher's job is to take the minds of his students and get them away from the colors and from addition and from calculus. Bring them back to this lesson right now, which is what? Multiplication. Focus on this. Focus on this. So this was a children's example. Let me take you to a, an adult example. Imagine you're in a university. Your parents pay a lot of money so you can get 
into this school. And finally, you're sitting in the class. And this is also, maybe it's an accounting class or a math class. And after you sit in this class, it's very hard to get in this school. Everybody comes with their notebook. They want to write everything down. Everything the professor says, they want to focus on it and pay attention to it. You raise your hand in your accounting class and you say, so blue or orange, which color is better? And the professor looks at you like, why did you come here? This is not what we do here. Why are you insulting this education? Go ask your friend this question. This is, you didn't come to me for this purpose, you understand? You're not only insulting your teacher, you're insulting the other students, you're insulting the education, and you're insulting your parents who paid for your education. You understand this issue? Now watch this. Allah gave us a Qur'an. He gave us a messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes or no? He gave us these things. And he says about his surahs, لِيَدَبَّرُوا ayatihi, So they think deeply about his ayat. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So you can think. When, you, when he says, so you can think, he is focused, making us focus on the things that he's talking about. Yes? So what, we, what do we do when we come to this? So what does the Qur'an say about this? And what does the Qur'an say about that? I have a question about this. I have a question about that. And you have all these other questions. And Allah is telling you and me, let go. Focus on what I'm giving you. Here's a surah. Here's an ayah. Here's revelation. Think about this. And when you think about this, then you will ask the right kinds of questions. Because now your thoughts have a direction. But what's happened with a lot of Muslims is, now you'll notice Muslims are starting to have doubt in Islam. And you will notice one thing that is in common among all of them. Their questions never come from studying the Qur'an. Their questions always come from outside, from some YouTube video here, some TikTok over there, some article over here, something they heard over here, some they were watching the news, they were watching a movie, they have these questions, 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 and then they say, Islam better give me an answer to all of my questions. It better answer curiosity A, B, C, D, and E. And if it doesn't have my answers, then this is not the right religion for me. Because now it's supposed to be like Google. When you ask Google something, it answers you immediately no matter what you ask. It has some answer for you. So Islam should be able to answer every question I have. This, what, what does it do? Obviously Allah will not waste time answering your useless questions. Because you're not respecting what Allah is giving you. You're not giving time to that. You're not focusing on that. And so as a result, now I only have two minutes left. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what Allah shows us. He says, when you keep asking these kinds of questions, it doesn't, it starts taking away your iman. With every question, your iman is being taken away. And slowly, 1% of iman got replaced with, oh, I guess Islam doesn't have this answer. Then the next one, oh, Islam's not that impressive. And you're becoming ungrateful for Islam. One of the words for being ungrateful is kufr. Kufr is not just disbelief. Kufr is also kufran and ni'ma. It means to be ungrateful. So Allah says, وَمَن يَتَبَدَّلِ الْكُفْرَ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ Are you going to ask questions like Musa was asked before? Because whoever replaces kufr with iman, meaning they, they took their iman, got rid of it, put kufr there instead, then they've gone off on the wrong path. That's why they are asking these wrong kinds of questions. This is a crisis because now, because of the devices that we have, Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube Shorts, new idea, new idea, new idea, new idea, constantly being bombed with new ideas. And with every new idea, you have different kinds of questions. And then you say, Islam doesn't have the answer. There's so many different ideas, and Islam has no, no direction, no answer. Now, this is the last thing I'll share with you. I'd like you to take this as the lesson. I, we all have questions, we're human beings, you can't help it. There's no, there's no way you can stop your mind from having questions. But try this for me. Take all of your questions, and you take a shelf in your brain, and you put them in the shelf, and you lock the shelf, close it. Hold your questions. Don't think about them all the time, let them go. And then start studying the Qur'an. 
Study the Fatiha. Study Baqarah. Study Ali Imran. Take time, even if it's little, 30 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. But study Allah's book and think about what Allah is saying. Think about what Allah... Don't, don't think about it from the point of view of your question. I'm looking for the answer to my question. Let me see if I find it. No, 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 no. Your questions are on pause. They're in the fridge. Let them be, let them get cold. Your focus is on what Allah is saying. And you know what's going to happen? So many of your questions will start disappearing. Because you'll realize those questions were pointless. There was no purpose to them. When, the, when Musa alayhi salam was asked, what color cow? There was no point to that question. When he was asked, is it a young cow or a, you know, an old cow? There was no point to that question. There was no reason to ask that question. When the Quraysh said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi isn't he a poet? Isn't he a magician? Isn't he? Th they asked all these questions. Allah didn't answer any of those questions. Ah, they say this, leave them alone. They say this, leave them alone. There are so many places in the Quran where people ask a question, Allah doesn't even answer it. When we are broken, our bones are broken in the grave and we turn into dust and decay, we're going to be made a new, new creation all over again? I'm going to be brought back to life? How? This is a question they asked. Allah said, قُلْ كُونُوا حِجَارَةً أَوْ حَدِيدًا Go turn into metal. Go turn into a stone. I'll bring you... That's not an answer. That's like, this is a stupid question. It doesn't deserve an answer. So what does Allah do when you study the Qur'an? He guides your questions. Guidance does not come from answers. Guidance comes from asking the right questions. And that's the lesson that's being taught in this ayah. So in this short time, my hope is that as you put those questions on the side and you start asking Allah directly what He's talking about, focus on the lesson at hand, you will find that eventually you'll open that shelf and it will be empty inside. There won't be anything left. All those questions will either disappear or Allah will answer them in a way that no human being could answer them. That is the gift that Allah has given us in the Qur'an. That's why He keeps telling us not أَفَلَا تَعْلَمُونَ Why don't you know? Why don't you know? Allah says أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Why don't you then think? Don't you think? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So you can think because questions are related directly to thought. What you think about is what you will ask about. What I think about is what I will ask about. I pray that Allah makes us people that think about the Qur'an. They think about the word of Allah because that will guide our thoughts. And once our thoughts are guided, our questions are also going to be guided and we'll be saved from making the mistake that Allah is warning about to the Muslims here in this remarkable ayah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa thikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube, but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family, and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.